Hey, this is Mike McAdam from Gen X Guitar. Today we're going to talk about four times Eddie Van Halen lied about his gear. So throughout the years, like many guitar players, I tried to go down certain rabbit holes trying to get that elusive brown sound that Eddie Van Halen possesses. So while I was thinking of this video, I found this magazine that I hadn't read in a long time. And basically what it is, is a compilation of guitar player interviews that Eddie had done up to that point. This was released in the summer of 1986. So as a young guitar player, I read this religiously. And as a side note, it's cool that Yaz Orbecht, I believe I'm saying his name correctly, the editor for Guitar Player has been releasing the audio from these interviews on YouTube. So I thought it'd be a cool time to revisit some of those times where I spent time and money trying to chase that Van Halen tone and failing miserably. So we'll get into it here. Number one, Eddie Van Halen modified his main Marshall. So in this interview from 1980, he talks about uh, this guy named Jose that had done some modifications, extra preamp tubes, whatever, to his Marshall. Later on, we found out that basically the amplifier was stock. So I'm wondering how many people in the 80s had, you know, Metaltronics or whoever add these mods to make their 70s or late 60s Marshalls gainier and hotter. But later we found out that basically the amp was stock and that a lot of the sound was happening from Eddie's fingers or from other things. Number two, Ed's use of a Variac. So in this 1980 interview, Eddie talks about um, raising the voltage on a Variac when in fact he lowered the voltage. So there's always something in this article that made me laugh. It's an editor's note from Paul Rivera and I'll read it out loud. This is Gen X guitar, which means naturally I'm putting on reading glasses. So you wanna put on reading glasses along with me, have a blast. This is not a recommended procedure for modifying amps and should not be attempted by anyone inexperienced in the field of electronics. Lovely. You can cause severe damage to the amp besides melting tubes. Since a Variac is an exposed transformer, by hooking it up incorrectly, you could get the hot of the AC line on the chassis of the amp and electrocute yourself. So don't electrocute yourself with a Variac. I've actually never messed around with one of those, but I will at some point since you can get them for like 50 bucks on Amazon at this point. But yeah, there were probably some people that melted their tubes and blew up their amps and blew up their houses or whatever and ruined their entire lives by hooking up a Variac to their Marshall. Fun times. Number three, the output level of his pickups. So if you read these interviews, Eddie always talks about liking stock PAF type pickups when in fact most of his recorded output has pickups that are significantly hotter. And I think this is a big part of getting the Van Halen sound. If you haven't already, check out Pete Thorne's video where he demonstrates something like 25 different pickups to nail the Eddie Van Halen sound. In my opinion, the one that probably gets you the closest if you're looking for early Van Halen is the DiMarzio Super Distortion, which I think is like a 13K pickup, which for that time was pretty hot considering most PAFs are in the seven to eight range. So that was definitely something that contributed to his sound that if you started going down the lower output PAF road, uh, wasn't gonna get you there. There's definitely moments where Eddie was using the Explorer on the first Van Halen album, where the pickups are the ceramic pickups that I think were made by Mighty Might, and those are a bit hotter as well. So it definitely wasn't just, okay, I'm using lower output PAF pickups. Number four. In this article, he talks about having his flangers and phasers modified by Jose as well. This is absolutely false from what I understand. His Phase 90 was just a stock script logo. You know, the Van Halen model MXR pedal gets you kind of close. I remember buying an MXR flanger, a vintage one, before they reissued them in the 90s and thinking, all right, here we go. I'm going to plug it in. It's going to sound like Unchained. It didn't. So later on, we find out the way he had it patched with his power amp supposedly had a lot to do with driving it the way it did. So with that flanger, I wasn't able to get closer to that sound. 
Okay, so that's four times that Eddie deceived us about the gear he was using. And Eddie, I want my time and money back for all the time I spent buying stuff, trying to sound like you and failing miserably. Of course, I'm kidding about this. We're having a little bit of fun with this video today. There's really something to be said about trying things that other guitarists do. Some things are going to work for you and some things aren't. Anyway, if you've gone down this rabbit hole before, comment below. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing and checking out some of our other videos on Gen X Guitar. I will see you in the next video.